On this problem we've got a fraction, but don't worry, fractions are actually pretty easy to deal with when they're in equations like this. When you've got a fraction in an equation, all you have to do is multiply both sides of the equation by whatever the bottom of the fraction is. If we've got over x, we're going to multiply both sides by a plain old x. That way x and divide by x cancel each other out, go away completely, and on the other side we just multiply. 15 times x, that's 15x. And now this should be looking a lot simpler than it was in that first step. Now we've got to use our basic algebra steps that we use a lot to solve for x. If we've got x plus 1 equals 15x, step 1 we need to get all the x's on the same side. I'm going to get rid of the x's on the left side and put them on the right side. x minus x cancels out. Still have that 1. 15x's minus x. Well that's like subtracting 1x so that leaves you with 14x's. Not done yet, still need that x completely by itself. To do that, we need to get rid of that times 14. To get rid of times 14, you divide by 14. 14's cancel. You're left with 1 over 14. And that is your answer for this problem. This problem wants us to find the maximum height of a projectile with this height function here. And the big trick on this one is you need to recognize that this is a quadratic formula here. You've got a t squared, a regular t, and then a constant. And that is just a quadratic. You want So first of all, put it in the right order. You want the t squared part, and then the regular t part, and then the part without any letters. Make sure that your negative stays on whatever part was negative. And we can just see we've got a quadratic with a is negative 16, b is 64, and c is 800. And we're not going to use the quadratic formula here. We're going to use, if we want the max height of a quadratic, we're looking for the vertex. So we need the vertex formula. And that is that the vertex for the input for the x, well here the t, is negative b over 2a. So b was 64, the part next to the plain old t. a was negative 16, the part next to the t squared. 2 times negative 16 is negative 32. Don't forget that's a negative b. 64 divided by 32 ends up being 2. Negative divided by negative is positive. So positive 2 is the time that gives you the maximum height. Next you just have to plug in that 2. So you're going to plug in a 2 for each of those t's. So we've plugged in 2 everywhere that we used to have the letter t. And now I just need to work that out. What is 2 to the second power? 2 times 2 is 4. Everything else stays the same. Sixteen times four, that is sixty-four. Sixty-four times two, that ends up being a hundred twenty-eight. Then eight hundred minus sixty-four plus one twenty-eight. Well, turns out that one twenty-eight minus sixty-four, that'll just be a positive sixty-four. And then eight hundred plus sixty-four is eight hundred sixty-four. So that's your answer as to far up as this projectile ever goes is 864 feet. We got that by finding the vertex x part and plugging it in to find the vertex y part. And remember, if you've got something times something squared, you do the exponent first and then the multiplying. You don't do 16 times 2 and then square it. You do 2 squared and then multiply. And that's how to figure out that problem there. All right, first thing to do with this problem is to take the information they give us and turn it into formulas. So when they say length is 8 more than width, well, for length, I'm going to say L. That's a cursive L there because a regular L you can confuse with 1 pretty easily. Length is 8 more than width. That means length needs to be whatever the width is plus 8. And then because I know the perimeter, I'm going to use the formula for that. In a rectangle, the perimeter 
equals two times the length plus two times the width. Remember, perimeter is how long, how far you would have to go to walk around a shape. And for a rectangle, that's two lengths plus two widths. And now I don't know length or width, but I know that the length is equal to width plus eight. So where I used to have the length L, I'm going to put W plus eight instead of it. And perimeter, they told me, is 64. So now I have an equation with only one thing I don't know. And that's great. It means I can find what W is. So next step in finding W, we got to solve this out. We're going to deal with these parentheses next. When we have a number right next to parentheses, we distribute. It means we multiply 2 by each of those terms there. 2 times W is 2W. Two, 2 times 8 is 16 and the rest stays the same. And then we can simplify this right side here. We've got a 2w and another plus 2w, so we need to combine those together. 2w plus 2w is 4w. 64 equals 16 plus 4w. And then we need to solve for w since there's only one of them now. It's time to solve for it. To get rid of a plus 16, we will subtract 16. We've got to do that on both sides. 16's cancel. 64 minus 16 is 48. And the 4w just stays right there. Next step in getting w by itself, we've got to get rid of a times 4. Opposite of times 4 is divide by 4. 48 divided by 4 is 12. And 12 is our width w. So 12 is our width. And then what's our length? Well, length is width plus 8. So for us, length is going to be 12 plus 8, or 20. Length is 20. And then what they want isn't the length or the width. They want the area. And the area of a rectangle is length times width. And we know the length. Length is 20. We know the width. Width is 12. 20 times 12 is 240. And that is the area. And our final answer for that problem. This problem talks about a median. And the way to talk about a median is to put all your numbers in order from smallest to greatest. So we've got 75, and then we've got 88, and then we've got 94, and then we've got 100. X, we don't know where it goes. We'll have to figure that out later. But the trick is if the median is 88, what does that mean? That means that needs to be in the middle. And if there's two numbers on the right, there needs to be two numbers on the left. So whatever X is, it better be somewhere on the, on the left side. Could be bigger than 75 or less than 75, but we need two numbers on the left and two numbers on the right. So whatever X is, it can't be bigger than 88. It's got to be 88 or less, which means it is not allowed to be 97. That's too big. If 97 was your x, 94 would be the median then. So it can't be that. 97 is not a possible value here. So we start with 24 students in this problem. And of these students, they tell us that 10 are males. So how many females does that leave? There's 24 students, 10 are male. Well, 24 minus 10 is 14 female students. So of those males, six students cheated, and four didn't. Of the 14 female students, four didn't cheat. So how many does that leave that did cheat? Well, 14 total, four didn't cheat. That leaves 10 that did cheat. So in total, how many students cheated? Well, six males, 10 females, total of 16 students that cheated. How many total students were there? Well, the whole 24. So your probability of a random student cheating in this class is 16 out of 24. And then we just need to reduce this. 
16 and 24, they're both even, they both divide by 2. 16 divided by 2 is 8. 24 divided by 2 is 12. And 8 and 12, hey, I remember now, both of those divide by 4. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 12 divided by 4 is 3. And there's nothing these two both divide by except for 1. So your final simplified answer is 2 thirds. Now if you can see it, 16 and 24 both divide by 8. That's a quicker way of getting to 2 thirds. But you can take as many steps as you want reducing this as long as you get to 2 thirds at the end. That is your answer.